Part 2, Background to Language Learning Unit 9 Motivation Unit 10 Exposure and Focus on Form Unit 11 The Role of Error Part 2 Background to Language Learning Unit 9 Motivation What is Motivation? Underscore motivation is the thoughts and feelings we have which make us want to do something, continue to want to do it and turn our wishes into action, for example motivation influences. Why people decide to do something. How long they want to do it for. How hard they are prepared to work to achieve it. Motivation is very important in language learning. It helps make learning successful. Many factors influence our motivation to learn a language. These factors include the usefulness to us of knowing the language well, for example, for finding jobs, getting on to courses of study, getting good marks from the teacher our interest in the target language culture, the culture of the language we are learning. Feeling good about learning the language, success, self-confidence, feeling that we can do things successfully. Learner autonomy slash independence, feeling responsible for and in control of our own learning, encouragement and support from others, for example. Teacher, parents, classmates, school, society. Our interest in the learning process, the interest and relevance to us of the course content, classroom activities, the teacher's personality, teaching methods. Learners may have strong motivation in one of these areas and little in another, or their motivation may be quite balanced. Learners may, for example, be quite uninterested in learning a particular language, then meet a teacher who they like so much that they begin to love learning the language. Key Concepts and the Language Teaching Classroom Here are some suggestions from two experts on motivation about how teachers can encourage greater motivation in their learners. 1. Set a personal example with your own behavior, for example. Be motivated as a teacher yourself. 2. Create a relaxed atmosphere in the classroom, for example, try to prevent anxiety in yourself or the learners. 3. Present tasks in an interesting way, which makes the tasks seem achievable to the learners. 4. Develop a good relationship with the learners. 5. Increase the learner's self-confidence about language learning, for example, help learners feel they can be good at learning the language. 6. Make the language classes interesting. 7. Promote learner autonomy. 8. Personalize the learning process, for example, make the course feel relevant to the learner's lives. 9. Increase the learner's awareness of their goals, for example, what they want to achieve. 10. Familiarize learners with the target language culture. Unit 10. Exposure and focus on form. What are exposure and focus on form? Across the centuries, people have studied how foreign languages are learnt. Many experts now believe that one way we learn a foreign language is by exposure to it. For example, by hearing and or reading it all around us and without studying it. They say we then pick it up automatically, for example. Learn it without realizing. This is the main way that children learn their first language. Experts also say that to learn a foreign language, particularly as adults, exposure to language is not enough. We also need to focus our attention on the form of the foreign language. For example, on how it is pronounced or written, on how its grammar is formed and used, and on the form and meaning of vocabulary. They say we need to use language to interact and communicate, too. Research has identified three main ways in which we learn a foreign language. Firstly, experts talk of us acquiring language. This means the same as picking it up. They say that to really learn a foreign language we need exposure to lots of examples of it and that we learn from the language in our surroundings. We need to hear and read lots of language which is rich in variety, interesting to us and just difficult enough for us, i.e. just beyond our level, but not too difficult. Acquisition takes place over a period of time, for example. Not instantly, and we listen to and read items of language for a long time before we begin to use them, a silent period. Secondly, to learn language we need to use it in interaction with other people. 
We need to use language to express ourselves and make our meanings clear to other people and to understand them. The person we are talking to will show us, directly or indirectly, if they have understood us or not. If they have not, we need to try again, using other language, until we manage to communicate successfully. Thirdly, research shows that foreign language learners also need to focus on form. This means that they need to pay attention to language, for example, by identifying, working with and practicing the language they need to communicate. We learn by picking up language, interacting and communicating and focusing on form. To acquire language, learners should hear and read a wide variety of language at the right level for them. They need exposure to language both inside and outside the classroom. Learners need time to acquire language. They may need a silent period before they can produce new language and we cannot expect them to learn things immediately. Learning language is a gradual process. Learners need to use language in the classroom to interact with classmates or the teacher. This gives them the opportunity to experiment with language and find out how successful their communication is. Learners need opportunities to focus on forms of language they have read or listened to in texts or used in tasks. The teacher can help them to notice certain points about language, think about their use and practice them. But we need to remember that some learners may like to learn and or are used to learning in particular ways. Teachers always need to match their teaching to the characteristics and needs of the learner. Unit 11. The Role of Error. Developmental errors and errors of interference can disappear by themselves, without correction, as the learner learns more language. In fact, correction may only help learners if they are ready for it, i.e. they are at the right stage in their individual learning process. But experts believe that learners can be helped to develop their interlanguage. There are three main ways of doing this. Firstly, learners need exposure to lots of interesting language at the right level, secondly they need to use language with other people, and thirdly they need to focus their attention on the forms of language. Sometimes errors do not disappear, but get fossilized. Fossilized errors are errors which a learner does not stop making and which last for a long time, even forever, in his, her foreign language use. They often happen when learners, particularly adults, are able to communicate as much as they need to in the foreign language and so have no communicative reason to improve their language. These fossilized errors may be the result of lack of exposure to the L2, second language and or of a learner's lack of motivation to improve their level of accuracy. Fossilized errors Fossilized errors are persistent mistakes that learners continue to make in their foreign language use. Often occur when learners, especially adults, can communicate adequately and lack motivation to improve accuracy. Result from limited exposure to the second language, L2, and or a lack of motivation. Key Concepts in the Language Teaching Classroom Correction Strategy Careful consideration of when and how to correct learners is essential. Gradual Learning Learning is a gradual process, and errors are a natural part of it. Slips versus Errors Distinguish between slips, correctable mistakes, and errors, systematic mistakes. Fluency activities, sometimes, ignoring errors in fluency activities can boost learners' confidence and fluency. Priority and correction, correct errors that impede communication over those that don't. Tailored correction, different learners may require different correction approaches based on their learning stage, style, and competence. Ways to help learners overcome errors. Exposure. Provide access to language materials just beyond the learner's level through reading or listening. Form focus, offer opportunities to concentrate on language forms. Interaction, allow learners time in class to use language for communication and interaction to build confidence. Timely correction and new language. Encourage learners to seek help or correction when they realize they've made a mistake or need new language. Errors are valuable for both learners and teachers, as they help assess learning progress and identify areas needing improvement. Understanding the role of error in language learning is crucial for effective teaching. 
by considering correction strategies, the nature of errors, and individual learner needs, educators can create a supportive learning environment that helps learners progress towards greater language proficiency.